Here we go. Good morning, everybody, and welcome on a wonderful Tuesday morning. Uh, today is August 16th. No, it is Wednesday morning. Oh, dear Lord, <laughs> time flies, right? Anyhow, this will be an exciting morning, and in a moment, you will see why. So let's see who is here who wants to make money with trading. Say yes in the chat box. Exactly. And who here wants to make enough money with trading so that you can quit your job and earn a full-time income? Exactly. That's what we want. And who here wants to make so much money with trading so that you can travel the world and live the lifestyle you always dreamed about? Yes, absolutely. So let's see how many of you want to get as much as possible out of our time together today. Yes, 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 I want that for you because for most of you here with us today, this is going to be a long-term relationship between us, I promise you. Once I show you how simple this is, once I show you an easy way to trade, once you realize that this actually works, once you realize that you can do this too, once you see that this can give you the freedom you want, you will want to hang out with us for a lifetime. I promise you that. So here's what we are going to do today. Yesterday, we did a little bit of day trading. And today, I am going to show you how exactly I find the best stocks to trade. So today, the focus is on stock trading. And in a moment, I will show you the tool that I use to find the best stocks. And I will show you what exactly I'm looking for when evaluating a stock. And of course, we are looking at the markets live. So here is what's going on today. In the upper uh, row here, you see the indices in the top left, the E-mini S&P right now slightly trading up 0.2%. Uh, we see the E-mini Nasdaq in the top middle also up 0.24%. And the Dow in the upper right-hand corner, trading above 22,000 again this morning, so up a quarter of a percent as well. In the lower left, then, we have crude oil. Crude oil right now trading below 48. We'll take a look at crude oil here in a little bit because today it's an important day for crude oil. So we'll come back to this in just a moment. Now, in the lower middle, we see gold, and gold is right now down 0.34%. And also the bonds are down. And again, there's this inverse relationship. When the stock market is going up, gold and bonds are moving down. So no surprises there. So let's talk about crude oil. And I just want to bring up crude oil here because right now we are trading below 48. So uh, let me just switch the chart here. This is where we are seeing the Dow right now. And let's talk a minute for the Dow. So uh, last week, the Dow dropped dramatically uh, based on the news, as you know, the increasing tensions between North Korea and the United States, but now it's bouncing back. And as you see, yesterday it closed at 21,998.99, just shy of the 22,000 mark. This morning, the pre-market activity in the futures points to a higher opening, so probably the Dow will open here above 22,000. How can we take advantage of this? Well, you see, uh, you can trade the Dow. This is what you can do when day trading. I personally like to trade stocks and options, and this is exactly what we're going to do today. Uh, today, we want to focus on trading stocks. Yesterday, we focused on day trading. Did you enjoy yesterday, the day trading? Uh, maybe we do an extended session in one of these Coffee with Marcus, maybe next week, uh, an extended day trading session, if you like that, because I know that yesterday day trading is, can be fast and furious. So this is why today I want to shift gears, want to go to stocks. Stocks are a little bit slower, especially when you're swing trading. You have more time to analyze it. I have more time to explain it to you. So I want to do this. Anyhow, I wanted to talk about crude oil here uh, for just a minute. So let's bring up crude oil. And we talked about crude oil, that crude oil has been struggling to break through the $50 barrier and has been trapped between $50 and $48. Now, yesterday uh, we broke below $48, and now what was previously support now acts as resistance. Why do I say it's an important day for crude oil? Well, a look at the economic calendar tells us why. So this is where we have the economic calendar. Yesterday was Tuesday. Today, we are going to focus on Wednesday. 
So uh, we already have the building permits out of the way. And this morning, building permits and housing starts disappointed. They came in lower than expected. However, the markets are shrugging it off and say, so what? And the markets are pointing to a higher open. At 10.30 Eastern time, so this is one hour into trading, we have the crude oil inventories and the crude oil inventories always move the crude oil market. So if you're day trading crude oil, which is one of my favorite markets to day trade, make sure that you are very, extremely careful here around 10.30. Also, what traders are focusing on today is the FOMC meeting minutes. So we want to see what these guys think. When will they raise interest rates again? Will it be December? Will it be next June? You see, for me, it doesn't really matter because here is how I find my trading opportunities. And uh, this is what works for me like a charm. It doesn't matter what the Fed is doing. It doesn't really matter what geopolitically is going on because every single day there are stocks that are moving against the market. Let me just show this to you for a minute uh, because it is so important that you that you understand. I want to go to uh, finance.yahoo.com. And uh, as you know, this is one of the, the major financial websites. And this is where when you scroll down on financeyahoo.com on the right-hand side, you will see that there's always the top gainers and the top losers. So I want to scroll a little bit down. Uh, here we go. See, this is where you always have gainers, stocks that are moving against the market, no matter what the overall market does, uh, that are nicely moving up and also stocks that are dropping like rock. As you see here uh, yesterday, absolutely in the news, oops, uh, yeah, we don't want to do this right now. Uh, Dick Sporting Good got hammered and got uh, slammed by 22%. So anyhow, how do I find the best trading opportunities? Well, I like to use here our PowerX Analyzer. And uh, let me just uh, enhance this, make this a little bit bigger, and also use the notepad here and show you exactly how to use it. So first of all, the PowerX Analyzer... <clears throat> finds the best stocks and therefore also options, okay, based on our PowerX strategy. Now, the PowerX strategy is a swing trading strategy. Swing trading means that you are in a position for a few days. And in a moment, I'll show you exactly how many days you can expect. So um, this is also a trend following approach. Basically, looking uh, what we are doing is we're looking for stocks that have momentum. And now we want to see that this momentum carries on for a few more days of approximately uh, two weeks. This is what we are looking for. So here's how we're going to use it. Step number one, PowerX Analyzer has a scanner built in. Now, in this scanner, you will find all the trading opportunities that exist for today. Now, in this scanner, there's probably around two or 300 opportunities that we have for today. And this is where we want to narrow it down and we want to optimize the scanner. What do I mean by optimizing? Optimize there the scanner results. We want to find the best scanner results based on our criteria. In order to do this, we are clicking on this uh, button here that says Optimize List. And here is the criteria that I personally like to use. I want to find stocks that over the past year, if I had traded it according to PowerX Analyzer, give me at least 60% return on investment. I want to trade stocks that are traded between five and three hundred dollars. These are my criteria. I don't like to trade stocks that are trading below five dollars. Uh, so at least five dollars. I want to see a profit factor of at least three, uh, meaning that here uh, over the long term, I'm making at least three dollars for every dollar that I risk. I also want to see that the risk reward ratio, meaning the ratio between my stop loss and my profit target is at least one to one and a half. And I want to see that over the past year, there were at least 12 trading opportunities according to PowerX Analyzer. And here's why. If I see at least 12 trading opportunities, meaning that this stock on average gives me a trading opportunity per month. 
Now, when I run this optimizer, it takes approximately 20 minutes. I don't want you to watch me running an optimizer here. So this is why I did it before I started here Coffee with Marcus. And so the whole scanner list of two to 300 stocks are being narrowed down to right now five possible stocks to trade. So this is where I'm narrowing down the list. Uh, so when I'm optimizing the scanner list, it means that I narrow down from 200 to 300 to usually anywhere between three to eight. Now, step number two, this is where I now decide on the best stock. Now, how exactly do I do this? And again, you need to do the same thing if you want to trade options. Today, we want to focus on trading stocks. In another Coffee with Marcus, I'll show you exactly how to do this to trade options, right? So uh, decide on the best stock that you anyhow need for trading options, okay? So, well, well, we'll focus on stock trading here right now. And how do I do this? Well, first of all, uh, the first is a visual inspection. I want to look at the chart and I want to see a few black bars. What does this mean? Well, these black bars means that the market is just going sideways, right? Whenever we see the red bars and the green bars, this is when we have nice trends. And again, what are we looking for? We have a trend following approach. So we want to see a lot of trends in the market. So let's take a look at this one. Yeah, we have a few black bars here. It's overall not bad. So is this trending very nicely? Well, this stock has been trending really nicely for most part of the year. And just recently, as you can see, it is flat. It looks pretty much like crude, all right, being trapped here between six and seven dollars here. Now it could break out, but let's just see if we find any better opportunities. Another thing that I do in my quick visual ins inspection here is I want to see that there is no gaps. Okay, uh, I want I I don't like gaps. Uh, here we have one little gap uh, that we have here in this stock, so that's not bad, especially since it's happening in the direction of the move. So if here we went short and then we gap down, look at this. This is fantastic. This is here then a money maker if it is in the right direction. So. Uh, this stock definitely um, passes the gap test in terms of few black bars and do I see nice trends? Not exactly. And you know what? Before we go to the third criteria here, let's just scan through the other stocks that are in the list with our first visual criteria here. So, um, well, we started from the bottom with uh, SSW, C-SPAN Corporation. Why not? Let's start from the bottom. So the next one here on the list is SGMS. So this is SGMS. Uh, this is a stock that, uh, as you can see, has been nicely trending upwards. So it has very nice, very few short trends, okay? So it has few black bars. So maybe that could be a possible candidate. So according to the first two criteria, we don't see any gaps, right? We see few black bars. We see some nice trends here. It could be a candidate. So let's take a talk about the third criteria. This is where I want to look at the numbers. And when I'm looking at the numbers, here is the numbers that I want to look at. So the first number that I look at is always the winning percentage. I would like to see a winning percentage of around 50%. This is what I would like to see. The second that I'm looking at is the risk reward ratio. The risk reward ratio basically tells me how much am I trying to make based on every dollar that I risk. Okay. So Let's take a look at this particular stock here, and I'm just moving it out of the way. And you see the past performance here. Over the past year, if we had traded this stock following the PowerX strategy, these are the results that we could expect. Now, we have six winning trades and nine losing trades, means that we have a winning percentage of 40%. Yeah, well, uh, I, I like to see around 50%. However, we are risking a dollar trying to make $8.37. That's not bad at all. So this is definitely one that we could consider. Now let's move on to the next one, NVGS. So let's take a look at this first. Wow, look at this. I like this one. We see very nice trends. We see a lot of green, a lot of red, right? So we see very nice trends here, both to the upside and the downside. 
so we see one little gap here. So there was a little gap and there was an even smaller gap. So it passes the gap test for me. I just don't want to see that a stock is just gapping all over the place. So this here for me is good. So let's take a look at the numbers here. And when looking at the numbers, what do we look for? The winning percentage. And the winning percentage here over the past year, we had 11 wins, five losses. So the winning percentage is around 68%. Now, we are trying to make $7.29 for every dollar and 15 that we risk. So we're looking at a risk reward ratio of one to seven. So this year is definitely a stock that interests me. I mean, if I have a pretty high winning percentage that is above 50%, and for every dollar that I risk, I can potentially make $7. Oh my gosh, I like this. So let's write this down. This is a stock that interests me, NVGS. So let's uh, let's move on and let's uh, take a look at A N O M D. So N O M D um, on the chart, it looks a little bit choppy. Uh, we have a little bit more black here. It seems that especially recently the stock has been going sideways. But you see the main criteria for me here uh, when looking at this. Look at this. I have a winning percentage of thirty-eight percent. Five winning trades, eight losing trades. And for every dollar that I risk, I make $2. Now, let me ask you, in MVGS, we had a 70% winning percentage, right? And we had a risk-reward ratio, risk-reward of 1 to 7. So for every dollar that we risk, we try to make $7. Now, look at this. Here we have 38% winning percentage. And for every dollar that we risk, we make $2. Which of these two stocks is the better stock? What do you think? I mean, you see, this is where, for me, it's a no-brainer. This is why I can do this analysis fairly simply. I'm walking through this analysis here a little bit slower because I want to explain what I'm doing. But usually, I can look at the stocks in five minutes or less and know what to do. And with a little bit of practice, you can do the same thing. Now, let's take a look at BPI. This is a, another stock that came up in the scanner. Ah, look at this. It's it's quite interesting. So uh, it has few black bars. It does have small gaps. But what I like about the gaps, they are occurring in the direction of the trend. So that is uh, pretty nice here. Right now we have a sell signal. So uh, the stock has been moving nicely. We had uh, 50 trades, seven winning trades eight losing trades, so a total of 15 trades, winning percentage just shy of 50%. And uh, for every uh, 40 cents that we risk, we're trying to make $2.40. So let's write these numbers down because that's definitely another one uh, that looks interesting to me. So BPI, the winning percentage definitely uh, lower here. So around 47% uh, uh, winning percentage, uh, but the risk reward, I like this. So risk reward, uh, we are looking at around one to six. Okay, so for every dollar that we risk, we made six dollars. Now, first of all, if I only wanted to trade one stock here today, then I would go with NGVS. Now, recently I've been traveling, and this is why uh, my portfolio is fairly empty. I had, a, I had a few nice trades that were going on. Let me just show you a trade that I closed out yesterday was uh, uh, no AT ATHM. So I caught this trade here on the long side. Uh, so this was a nice, beautiful, beautiful trend. And uh, yesterday, PowerX Analyzer told me to close it. So I did. I uh, took uh, some, some nice profits here on the table. Uh, I also uh, was in ABEO. So ABEO, as she was moving nicely, still profitable here. But right now, the current signal PowerX Analyzer shows me buy to close. So these were uh, the two trades that I was in. So right now I'm looking to to load up my portfolio because I, I have pretty much only uh, ABO left uh, here in my portfolio. And uh, so it's time to load up a few more. So again, if you're picky, you only go with NVGS. Uh, for me right now, both of these trades look pretty nice. So NVGS, BPI, and uh, by the way, yesterday, I also identified a trade and I took an option trade on this. It's CYOU. So uh, this was a short trade. This was a short trade. And uh, this seems to work out really nicely. So this is where I have uh, I put an option in. And so in another session, we will talk about how to trade options. Anyhow, so 
we have to talk about step number three. So step number three is actually fairly easy. This is where you place the order, right? And uh, so this is where you just simply log into your account. PowerX Analyzer does not place the trades for me. This is where I'm logging into my brokerage account. And in my brokerage account, I place the order. Now, what would be the order here that we place for NVGS? So see right here, let's go to NVGS. It shows us right here what exactly we want to do. So place the order for MVGS is sell. Then there's the number of uh, shares that you want to trade based on your position sizing. And we'll talk about this in another Coffee for Marcus that I show you a little bit more about position sizing. Sell X amount of shares of uh, NVGS at uh, 9.94 stop okay so this would be at a stop price so uh if this trade goes lower than 994 we want to be in a trade if mvgs stays above 994 we are not interested so the other order that we would place here is uh bpi if you choose to trade bpi so let me just bring this up. So here, this is also a sell order. So interesting, both of them are sell orders. So this is where you insert how many shares you want to trade at BPI. Okay, and this would be here at uh, PowerX Analyzer tells me exactly 864 stop. Now, if you're unsure and you never placed trades before, we can do this in another Coffee for Marcus that we actually practice placing trades, right? That I show you exactly how to do this. But you see, for today, I like to keep these Coffee for Marcus short. I, I want to respect your time. I want to make sure that you get the most out of the session. And this is why today I wanted to show you how exactly I'm finding the best stocks and options to trade. Now, today we will focus on stocks, so we are having a trend following approach. I use our PowerX analyzer. Step number one, I optimize the scanner results, narrow it down from 200 to 300 to 3 to 8, right? So I let the computer do the heavy lifting. And then step number two, this is where it takes me five minutes. It might take you 10 minutes to decide on the best stock based on a few criteria. First, we want to have few black bars. Second, we want to have no gaps. And third, we want to look at the numbers and see if the numbers make sense. Easy enough, right? And then step number three, place the order. And you see, this is what I want to show you. Stock trading doesn't have to be complicated. Trading can be simple. Trading can be easy. Don't overthink it. Now, of course, we will have losing trades. But look at this. If on losing trades, we lose $100, and on winning trades, we make $700. I mean, you can lose every other trade, and you still make money. So it's all about putting the odds in your favor, and ultimately, this is what we do when trading. We don't know what happens. We're making an educated guess, and we are putting the odds in our favor, and based on this, we are then placing the trades. So this wraps up this uh, morning's Coffee for Marcus. For those of you who are here live, I want to hang out and uh, answer a few more questions. For those of you who watch the recording, please come on, join us live, because then I'm going to hang out, answer a few more questions. I like the, the interaction here. Really love it, hanging out with you in the mornings. Appreciate you coming. Uh, I'm sure that you're getting a lot of value out of these sessions because I see that you're coming again and again and again. All right, I'm going to stop the recording and I'm going to hang out here to answer a few more questions live.